Today, I'm going over 21 settings that frick new players. In other words, make you super slow, awkward, and inconsistent. And the reason you should listen to me is because I was just like you. Back in 2016, when I started, I didn't know the stuff I know now at 4,000 hours being Grand Champ 3. And so I made more than half of these mistakes completely without knowing, which is why I'm telling you these 21 things, this guide alone would have probably saved me upwards of a thousand hours of playtime. So point is, you can either watch this 10 minute video and never worry about settings again, or you can not watch this video and be sad about your bad settings all the time like me. I'm not crying, you're crying. And by the way, while you watch this, I recommend that you literally change your settings as we go. But if you're about to do anything crazy or you have questions or concerns and you're not sure if you wanna make these changes, I also run a Discord community on the side as part of our coaching company at thegrandchampbootcamp.com with over 50,000 members that you can join for free. Once again, I'll have that Discord first link in the description below. Click that to ask questions as we go along and get responses in real time. There are literally people active 24 seven. Otherwise, into the settings. Mistake number one, drift and air roll on different buttons. Available buttons on a Rocket League controller are limited. And since air roll only happens in the air, and power slide or drift only happens on the ground, bind them to the same button to free up space. As you rank up and become faster, smooth recoveries and things like using power slide every time you land, they only become more important. So bind joystick air roll and power slide to the same button to save space and for more seamless and smooth recoveries. Mistake number two, not picking air roll left or air roll right. By default, air roll left and air roll right are not bound in the Rocket League settings. But if you don't know, in 2024, having at least one directional air roll is pretty much mandatory at the high ranks. The reason for this is because directional air roll unlocks so many more advanced mechanics and aerial car control that you want to be able to learn. So regardless of what rank you're at, don't forget to bind at least one directional air roll. Mistake number three, binding air roll left or air roll right to power slide. I know I just told you to bind drift to joystick air roll, but to be clear, that's different from binding air roll left or air roll right to drift or power slide. Unfortunately, since there's nowhere in the Rocket League settings that explains this, I see a lot of new players making this mistake. I even onboarded a champ who has almost a thousand hours, who has probably over a thousand hours in our 18 plus 12 week one-on-one -on -one coaching bootcamp at thegrandchampbootcamp.com. And the first thing we did when we paired him with one of our pro coaches was change his controls. His controls were so messed up because because he had aerial left on power slide that he just couldn't do fast aerials. Point is, check your settings, even if you're a good player. Mistake number four, putting boost on the face buttons. Are there pros who use boost on default, which I think is O on PS4? Yes, and can you? Yes, but in my experience, it's not optimal. The reason for this is because these four buttons here on your controller, they're better used for actions that don't require constant pressing. Things like ball cam that you wanna to toggle are better to put on these buttons, whereas things like boost that you wanna hold are generally more effective to put on the back buttons. Is this game changing? No, but I think it's more than nothing. And if you can optimize your layout here, you're gonna have better control over your car and you're also just gonna reduce thumb fatigue and miss inputs from trying to like oh mash four of these buttons at the same time oh boost, jump and power side it's not gonna work on to mistake number five using camera shake come on guys just turn, turn this off mistake number six playing KBM. KBM stands for keyboard and mouse, and it is not the optimal setup to play Rocket League. Is playing keyboard and mouse game losing? No, there are mechanical players like Avample and pro players like Yukio who have made it very far playing KBM, but it's less than ideal. In order for top levels, it goes PC is better than playing on console. Playing controller on PC is better than playing controller on console. PS4 controller on any platform is better than Xbox controller on any platform. And every Everything, including KBM, is better than Switch. Jokes aside, if you have a choice, you want to play with a wired PS4 controller on PC, that's the optimal setup, or at least what all the pros use in pro play. Mistake number seven, putting drive on joystick. I know what you're wondering, Luke, what type of idiot would put their drive on joystick? Huh? 
When I was getting into Rocket League, there was a pro player at the time who played for G2. You may know him now as a content creator. He was named Rizzo, and he was the only pro I knew of. He was the one that I followed, and he bound drive or accelerate or decelerate to his left joystick. So me being a new player that wanted to be like my favorite pro, I was like, I just did the same thing. I remember in my settings guide, my first video that blew up that now is like, 2 million plus views. I told everybody, put drive on joystick. Where my accelerate and brake buttons are actually just my left joystick pointing up or down. Now, if you can do this, I highly, highly recommend it, what? especially if you're a new player, because doing this frees up so many buttons now that you don't have to bind accelerate or brake. However, now that I'm at 4,000 hours, I know guys, I realize this is a mistake. The reason this is a mistake is because yes, you save buttons, but when you get on low boost and joystick is your drive button, it takes time to push the joystick in each direction. So my ground recoveries and turns when I'm not boosting, they can be slow. And and there's really no way to fix that other than, you know, relearning everything. And uh, I'm not about to do that when I'm close to getting SSL for the first time. So I'm just going to be slow forever. <laughs> anyway, don't do what I did. Okay. Keep a drive button and a reverse button, ideally on the back of your controller that you can hold down. It just allows for more complete control of your car. I know it's better. I'm a bad boy. Speaking of dumb things I've done and time wasted last year, I was hard stuck GC1 actually for over 12 months. And the reason was because I only solo queued and I refused to go to high rank players for help. But I kind of just got into the habit of doing the same five minute air dribble warm up routine and 45 minutes of rank twos. And guess what? I didn't get any better because I wasn't learning anything. It wasn't until I started working with the pro coach shock back in March of 2024 that he pointed out some of my weaknesses, got me focused on some new training, and I broke through to hit a new peak rank of over 1700 on Lamar. That's grand champ three. If you can relate to me, you might also be a good fit for one-on-one -on -one coaching with my team of coaches, including shock at the grandchampbootcamp.com. At the GCB, we do paid one-on-one -on -one coaching for 18 plus players ranked diamond and above. Currently, shock is accepting new students but he's got just 12 spots left of 40 for one-on-one -on -one coaching with him. To get started with Shock or anybody else on my team, send me a message on Discord with the keyword 21. So I know you came from this video and my team will talk to you about one-on-one -on -one coaching, 18 plus only. And now onto the rest of the settings list. Mistake number eight, not using Bacchus Mod. For those of you who are on PC, there's a mod called Bacchus Mod that gives access to MMR trackers, training variants, and so many other good plugins. I get questions from people asking, Luke, how do you show the MMRs next to people? That's a Bacchus Mod feature and you can just toggle it on in there. So if you're playing PC, download Bacchus Mod. It's one of the first things you need to do if you're getting serious about Rocket League. Mistake number nine, not using workshop maps. For some reason, workshop maps are not accessible by default, but they are critical once you get to the intermediate ranks. And by the way, when I say intermediate ranks, I mean like Platinum Diamond Champ. When you want to start to master your car control outside of free play, using things like rings maps for air roll, using things like aim training for shooting by Coco, using things like Hornet's Nest for for recoveries uh, by DMC, using things like Dribble Challenge 2 for dribbling. All these maps come from workshops. There's actually different ways you can access these and different workarounds, whether you're on Steam or Epic Games that you can follow to make sure you get access. I've got videos on those that'll be up here. If you're trying to rank up in 2024, use workshop maps or you're going to be left behind. Mistake number 10, using all the graphics. For max FPS and the least distractions in ranked, you want to set all graphics to their lowest setting except render detail. Keep render detail max, everything else low for optimal rank play. Mistake number 11, not using Discord. Discord is not only the best way to find teammates who play Rocket League, but also ask questions from more experienced players. Mistake number 12, ignoring the team up option. If you're solo queuing, it is rare to find a not bad teammate, much less a good one. So if you do find a good teammate, call this cheating. But what I recommend you do is hit the party up button. Even if they're just not bad, teaming up with somebody not bad is better than teaming up with somebody who may or may not be AFK at the start of the game. Setting number 13, unmapped quick chat binds. Communication is key in solo queue Rocket League, but the default comms are pretty much just used to meme. So I recommend you add on your left and on your right for kickoffs, as well as defending. So that way you can tell your teammates if you're going or staying back after a kickoff. Bonus points if you bind sorry or my mistake. Mistake number 14, default camera settings. I just dropped my updated 2024 camera settings guide with a few changes, but the TLDR, 
is field of view, increase to max, distance, 260, 280, height, 100, 90 or 100, maybe 110, angle, negative three to negative five, stiffness, 0.45 to 0.65, swivel speed, 4.0 to 7.0, transition speed, 1.0 to 1.2 or 1.4. If you want full explanations of how you know where you fall in those ranges, go check out the full guide up here. Mistake number 15, default sensitivity. Most pro players do not use the default 1.0 sensitivity. And the reason is because for many people, it feels too slow. For steering sensitivity, the most common range is anywhere from 1.0 to 2.0. And same thing for aerial sensitivity. If you're feeling slow, experiment with a higher sensitivity. If you're feeling inconsistent, experiment with a lower sensitivity. Mistake number 16, default dead zone. If you set your dead zone wrong, your controller might feel heavy, or you might feel like you've got this slow car bug, or you might just straight up press the wrong buttons. Like you'll just be back flipping when you're trying to double jump. You want your controller dead zone anywhere from 0.03 to 0.05 for the snappiest response times. Of course, if you've got a bad controller, you might need to go a little bit higher to make the controller less responsive. But if you've got a new controller or one that's just not broke, lower is generally better. And then for dodge dead zone, it's the opposite. We want to prevent accidental dodges. So we want to make it so that way we have to push our joystick 50 to 80% of the full direction in order to signal that flip. So I would set this anywhere between 0.5 and 80 to prevent accidental dodges. Mistake number 17, 100% nameplate scale. Rocket League added an option a few years ago where you can adjust the size of nameplates. And when that dropped, I basically shot it from the rooftops, put it on 200%. That way you can see opponents better and track players on the field. But now with a new content update where you can see boost meters in ranked two, max nameplate scale is even more important because if you increase nameplate scale, you'll increase the size of the boost meters of your teammates. And so you can actually see how much boost they have. So for those two reasons, I suppose this one is personal preference, but I highly, highly recommend 200% nameplate scale for best performance at ranked because the bigger the nameplate scale, the more information you're going to get even from long distance and the better information you have, the better decisions you'll make in game ideally. So 200 on the nameplate scale. Now for some performance tweaks, I'm going to give you the two biggest things that will increase the way your game runs and they're in video settings. First off, V-Sync, which is on by default, turn this shit off. It's so bad. I don't know anybody who it helps. And 19, borderless or windowed, you almost always want to play full screen for game mode, it will reduce your input lag, meaning it will reduce the amount of time that it takes for the game to register a button input. You want that to be as low as possible. So we want to be on full screen on your native resolution, graphics as low as possible with V-Sync off. This is going to get you 80 or 90% of the speed jump that you're going to get from adjusting your in-game settings. Tip number 20, chat on. Call this personal preference. In my experience, turn this off. My Rocket League experience improved significantly when I <laughs> stopped listening to my solo queue teammates. Imagine that. Mistake setting number 21 being unsubscribed to the Spooky Luke channel. Come on. You thought you guys thought I wasn't going to slip in a subscribe plug at the end. So original. Okay. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, if you guys want a complete settings guide and not just this quick list, I just made an ultimate guide updated to 2024 with all my settings, full explanations, step-by-step -step you can follow to build the best settings for you, not just copy me or copy me if you want. It's linked on screen right here. Click the video and uh, I'll see you there. Thanks so much for watching, guys.